Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I have a video for you that has been highly requested and that is how to blend your colored pencils. I figured I would do it this way rather than doing it in a coloring book because you always see me doing it in a coloring book. So we are going to blend some different colors within the same color family and then some colors that are within different color families and I'm just going to show you some different ways to do it. I'm going to go over the burnishing skill and so on. If you enjoy videos like this, please do make sure that you subscribe to my channel and also turn your bell notifications on. And if you enjoyed this video, please do make sure you give it a thumbs up. I'm also now on Patreon if you would like to support me over there. And I also do now have an email list, which you will find the link for down in the description below. If you sign up for my email list, you will also receive a free color chart as my gift to you. You can use that chart to swatch all of your colored pencils and any other mediums that you may have. Let's go ahead and get into this Prismacolor blending tutorial. The first colors that I have, I am going to show you how to blend or how I would blend colors that are kind of within the same color family. And I'm also going to pull in a highlight color that kind of goes along with those. So we've got our three colors in the same color family. So reds, oranges, and this one has a lot of orange in it as well, but it is a brighter orange, which is one of my favorite colors. It's salmon pink. It's one of my favorite colors to use for a highlight color. You guys all know how I am about my highlights. And then I always like to have sometimes two different colors that will highlight things. And so I brought in my other favorite color, which is eggshell. And I'm going to show you in this first rectangle here how I would lay these colors out to blend them and get a really nice blend so that the colors actually look like they are running into one another. And by the time I'm done, hopefully you will no longer see any of the white of the paper. I'm going to show you how I am going to blend them together and burnish them in the end, trying to use just the eggshell, which is my lightest highlight color. So the first thing you need to know before we even start, I'm going to go over the colors with you in a minute, but the first thing I'm going to use is my Doll 133. You guys know that's my favorite pencil sharpener. And I am going to make sure all of my pencils have a very sharp tip. So I think that we are now good. I just had one that needed to be sharpened. So the colors that I have, if you guys want to go ahead and do this with me, to make these rectangles on the Spring Hill paper, I just used this little ruler I had and then I used my Micron uh, pen because I know that the Microns will not smudge. So if you ever want to be able to practice your blending skills, this is really all you have to do. And then you can just use this to practice your blending or even create some color combinations that you want to keep for the future. So this is also, if you think about it, going to be a new color combinations, Prismacolor color combinations video because the colors that I'm going to show you are going to go together really nicely. So I have Crimson Lake and then I have Poppy Red which is one of my favorite reds and then I have Salmon Pink and my Eggshell. Okay, so to get started we are going to start with our Crimson Lake you are going to hold your pencil to the side just like I am and kind of rest it on these fingers here so that you are on the side of your lead and you are not going to put too much pressure on the soft wax based lead to where you end up uh, breaking your lead. So what I like to do is I like to come in with my darkest color first. And I am just going to pull this down a little bit. I'm remembering that I have four shades here that I want to be able to lay down on the paper. So I am only going to come down about a quarter of the way. And 
and I like to keep it darker at the top. As I come down a little bit further, I'm going to pull the pressure up off of my pencil or not add any more layers. Like here you could see I just went over it a second time because I want it to be darkest at the top. But then I'm going to pull up on the pressure and make it a little bit lighter here. So this way I could come back in with my next color, which is my poppy red. And I can start right about here where I already lay down this color. And if you can see, I don't know if you can already see that, but look how beautifully these blend together. You are going over the Crimson Lake and pulling down even further with your poppy red. And then you're going to do the same thing to where you kind of lighten it up so that you can come in with your next color. Okay, so my next color is my salmon pink. And so I'm going to go over the lightest part of where I laid that poppy red. And I'm going to use a little bit of harder pressure where that blend line is. And then I'm going to come down a little bit more, lightening it up, because this is where I'm going to come back and I'm going to lay my eggshell in the lightest area of this salmon pink. So now I'm going to get my eggshell. And I'm going to go over the lightest area of where that was, where the blend line is. And I'm going to come over that and I'm just going to pull this all the way down to the bottom. Look how beautiful that is. These colors, these four colors blend together so nicely. And I'm going to show you how we're going to get a really good blend. But I want to explain to you first how we did this is we chose our darkest tone. So our darkest tone is the one that you would use for shading. If you were coloring an object on a coloring page, you would use the darkest tone specifically for shading. And then I have my poppy red, which is considered my shading color. And then I chose a highlight color. And in this, click, in this case, I decided to choose two what I would consider highlight colors, but the eggshell I'm using for more as a burnisher, and I'll show you how I'm gonna do that after I show you this. So this is the salmon, salmon uh, pink, and so the salmon pink was my main highlight color. So I've got my shadowing color, my shading color, or my mid-tone, and then my highlight color. And then instead of using white, which you see most people use for burnishing, I pulled my eggshell for that instead. Now the colors that I love to use when I'm burnishing, you can always burnish with your lightest color. If I wanted to burnish with the salmon pink, I would be able to do that too. But I like to have a really good combination of colors and that's why I'm bringing in my eggshell. So now we're gonna come back over and we are going to do another layer. So I'm coming back with my Crimson, Crimson Lake and I'm using a little bit harder pressure here at the top and then pulling this down into where that blend line was with my next color, which was my poppy red. Now I'm gonna come back again with my poppy red and I'm gonna find that blend line and I'm going to come in there even darker and I'm gonna lighten it up as I come in with the second layer. And you can see on this paper how well the Prismacolors blend together because you can barely even see the blend line anymore. They just magically have blended together so seamlessly already. And I'm not even done. Okay, so then I'm gonna come back with my salmon pink and I am going to come to where that blend line was. If you notice, I'm doing all of these in a circular motion. And when I come down here, I'm not using as much pressure. But here at the blend line with my previous color, where it meets with the previous color, I'm using a little bit of harder pressure. And again, I'm kind of going lighter as I get down towards the end of where that color is. Then I'm going to come back in with my eggshell. And I'm going to come to where the blend line was again with the salmon pink. And I'm just going to pull this down through. If you look at this, you can see that there is still white of the paper. There's still plenty of the white of the paper or the tooth of the paper, what I like to call it, 
or what most of us call it. Um, you could still see that there is plenty left and we've got plenty of room left for blending. So if I want to, I can come back and I want to make this a really seamless blend. So I'm going to come back here over the top and one of the tricks you can do, if I wanted to put my paper sideways like this and you're working on filling this white, one of the things you can do is you can come back the other direction. And when you come back the other direction, hopefully you guys can see this on camera, but this is what fills in all of that white in the tooth of the paper because previously you were going the other direction, now you're coming back with in the opposite direction. And so you are able to fill that extra tooth of the paper. Look how beautiful that is. So now I'm gonna come back with my poppy red, which was my mid-tone color. And I'm gonna come back in here where I had that laid and I'm gonna do the same thing. Now when you're doing this and applying this to a coloring book page, don't ever be afraid to turn your coloring book page so that you could get the same effect. But look how just by coming back the other way and going in the opposite direction, how much pigment is actually covering this, uh, this area now. I want to be able to come back with my salmon pink and now I'm gonna go over that area and of course I'm going to start where the poppy red was and I'm going to work on going in a circular motion in the opposite direction and I am just pulling this down and through. When I get down here to the bottom, I'm going to go a lot, I'm, I'm going to go over it with a lot less pressure. I would say about medium pressure. But look how all the white of the paper is just kind of going away and I've not even burnished yet. So this is something else that you can do um, without having to actually burnish your objects that you're coloring. And so now I'm coming back with the eggplant and I'm going all the way to the bottom. And I'm going over that blend line. And if you look at this, you cannot even see the blend line anymore. Okay, so we're going to go over this just one more time and I'm going to show you that you could actually do this without ever having to come back in and burnish anything. So I'm starting with my darkest color, my Crimson Lake. And I'm pulling down into where that poppy red was. Now I'm coming back with the poppy red and I'm going again over that blend line I'm coming back with the uh, salmon pink and again I'm going back over that blend line and I am just pulling down into where that eggplant was and then I'm going to come back in with my last color and I'm going to go over that and I'm just going to blow the wax out of the way because there will be little uh, wax pieces kind of laying around but look how beautiful this blend is it's absolutely gorgeous and most of the white of the paper is already covered but if you look at it very, very closely, you could still see a very little bit. If I wanted to continue keep going over it with my main colors, and I maybe wanted to hold it in the right direction and go back over it in this direction, it would fill in the rest of that white. And as you can see, the blending is already extremely seamless. I mean, you can't even tell where one color starts and the next one um, begins because that is what it should like when what it what it should look like when you're blending your uh, colored pencils, whether it be Prismacolors or any other uh, colored pencil. So if I wanted to now, like I told you before, 
I brought in my eggplant because you guys always know that I like to sometimes use two what you, what you would consider highlight colors. Now, eggshell is a really great highlight color, but it also can be used as your lightest color to go over and be able to burnish everything and just kind of pull everything through. So if I wanted to, I can use the eggshell and I would just come back and I would go in the opposite direction and I would just go over and use this as a burnish color instead of white. Look how it is doing that. That is so cool. Look how it's just pulling everything together and it is so, so seamless. And now we have a blend where there is absolutely no white showing through. Now, if you wanted to, those of you that have watched my uh, coloring tutorials before on my channel, you know that once you do this and you burnish your colors together, it is going to lighten it up a little bit. And sometimes that's why I'll do this. I'll use something like eggshell because if you use white, which is what a lot of people use for their burnishing color, if you use the white, it will put the like a very pale kind of white wax layer over the top. And so I always do come back after it's been burnished and I'll add my colors back in because it kind of lightens them up a little bit. Now the eggshell, if you saw when I was coloring this, it lightened it up a little bit, but not as much as the white would had. But if you wanted to bring back some of that color, all you would do is you would come back and just go back over it. And you've already gotten rid of all of the white of your paper and you've already done your burnishing. So what this is going to do is it's just going to make it darker and more vibrant. Look how pretty that is. And again, I'm just going in a circular motion. And then you would just go through anywhere you wanted to add the color back in. And these pencils are wax based, so you'll be able to see the wax moving around. So once all the tooth of the paper is filled, it's very easy to just be able to move the wax around and maneuver it in the areas that you want to be able to see it. Look how pretty though. It's a really seamless blend. And you absolutely cannot see any more white of the paper. There is our number one blend. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so I say that now we try something from another color family. How about if we go with blues? Let me go ahead and grab some blues and I will show you how I pull my co colors together and we will try to blend them together again. I wanna show you in this box what a difference it makes when you choose the right shadowing colors and the right highlight colors and how the difference in the values of the colors really makes things pop. So I'm going to shade this one in a little bit different. I'm not going to start at the top with the darkest and come to the bottom with the lightest. We are only gonna use three shades in this one and they're going to be strictly all blues. So I have my favorite shadowing color that I use all the time when I'm coloring with blues and that's my indigo blue. Then I have something that is kind of bright and happy in the blue range and it is our Caribbean Sea. And then I have one of my favorite highlight blue colors and I believe this is sky blue light. I think that's how you say it but you can tell that I have used it so much that I don't have much of it left. The cloud blue is also a very pretty color, but I believe this one has a little bit more brightness to it, and this is going to create the effect for this box that I want to be able to show y'all. Okay, so what I'm going to do in this one is I'm going to come here to the top, and I'm going to start with my indigo. And again, I'm holding my pencil to the side. and I'm coming down. And as I come down, it's going to get a little bit lighter. 
Now I'm going to come to the bottom and I'm going to do the same thing because in this one our highlight color is going to meet right in the center. Just because I want to show you the difference in values of colors and how they make, how that one thing makes such a difference. So we are going to have the highlight right in the center and that is the only place you're going to be able to see the highlight. Okay, so that's my indigo. Then I'm going to come in here with my Caribbean C. And I'm going to go over the area where I had the lightest of the indigo and where that blend line is. And I'm just going to try to pull that through. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do the same thing. Now I want room for my highlight, so I'm not going too far because I want you guys really to be able to see this. So I'm going over where the blend line would have been and into that indigo blue. And I'm just kind of pulling this through and I'm lightening up as I get to this part. Okay, so now I'm going to come in with my highlight color. And I'm pretty sure that this color is called Sky Blue Light. I hope I'm saying that right. And I'm going to come in right here in the center. And I'm going to pull all of that through. And as you can see, I'm going over where that blend line is and I'm kind of going into the other colors just a little, just to kind of blend them in. But this is another really beautiful color combination that I have come to love. And I use this a lot when I am working with blues or like even if I want to color a blue flower, this looks really pretty on a blue flower. I think Joanna Basford's World of Flowers. <laughs> You guys know that's my absolute favorite book, especially for coloring flowers. So I'm coming over here and I'm just with my indigo blue, which is my absolute favorite blue shadowing color. It adds so much depth and I'm just coming back over and I'm doing a second layer and lightening it up as I come a little bit lower with a little less pressure. And then I'm going to do the same here where I come in and I go very dark with more pressure. And then I'm going to come through just like that into my, I think it was Caribbean C. Now I'm going to do the same thing I did before and I'm going to come to where that blend line was and I'm going in a circular motion and I'm using more pressure here where it's blending into the indigo blue. I'm kind of going into the indigo blue and I'm pulling down into where that sky blue light is. And I'm doing the same thing in a circular motion, holding the pencil at its side, doing the same thing down here. Okay, so let's come back with our sky blue light. And we are going to go over this one more time. Again, I'm going over my Caribbean blue and I'm pulling it down into the center. Now I know you guys can see the difference in the values of these colors and how pretty they are. Look how beautiful this is already. And I've only just used three different colors. But if you look at it, you could see the difference in the values from this very light blue, which we're getting from our sky blue light. And then here we have a blue, which is kind of, um, it's our Caribbean Sea, but it's kind of like a brighter color. So it, the value in this blue is very different than the indigo blue, which is a very dark, deep blue. Now we're gonna come back and we are going to go over this again. with much harder pressure and I'm going to just kind of pull this down a little bit into the Caribbean Sea. Now I'm going to come back with the Caribbean Sea. I'm going to go in a circular motion again and I am just going to pull this through and again go over that blend line and as you can see it's all about just repeating yourself and doing the same thing over and over again I'm even going all the way up into the indigo just to try to get rid of some of that white of the paper 
and as I get lighter, I pull up on the pressure of my pencil where I'm coming into what would be my highlight color. And then I'm going to come back down here and I am going to do the same thing. This indigo blue, the more layers that you lay down with this, this color can get so dark. But this color is fantastic for adding shadows and depth. It's my absolute favorite. This is actually my replacement pencil because I've already used I've already used up like at least two of them. Okay, so now I'm coming back with a circular motion again and I'm pulling that through again. I'm going over. You can go back over the darkest of your colors just to kind of blend everything through. And as I come into my um, sky blue light, I'm pulling up on the pressure of my pencil. And then I'm just going to come back with a circular motion again with a little bit harder pressure with my highlight color. And then I'm kind of going back and I'm burnishing a lot of this in so I could get rid of the white of the paper. And see this time I did more burnishing with the lightest color whereas before I turned the paper sideways to get rid of a lot of that. Now if I wanted to I can still go back and do the same thing I did before if I still have white of the paper showing and I don't have the blend that I want. I'm just blowing out some of the wax. But if, um, if I come back and I do this, like look by just doing this, like how much more depth and darkness I'm adding to this. Like I said earlier, this indigo blue is absolutely amazing. And the more that you add, the more layers, it just darkens up so much. It's a gorgeous color. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do the same thing where I still see the white of the paper. And then I'm going to come back and do the same thing here. And this is just kind of filling in all the white of the paper and bringing everything together. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my sky blue light, which is my highlight color. And I'm just going to come in and go sideways with this one and just kind of bring everything together. And then if I wanted to burnish it, I would just go all the way from the bottom, all the way through the whole thing and just pull all those colors together. Look how pretty. And then I could always come back if I was not satisfied with the fact that that lightened it up a little bit. I can always come back and add a little bit more of the dark blue. But you probably want to turn your paper back so that you can come in here and do it the other direction. And then I just added that blue back in and it just made it dark again. When I tell you this paper is amazing, like this paper's amazing. It takes so many layers, but there is our blue combination. And I think I'm going to go ahead and do one more for y'all. I told you that I was going to do something that was a combination that you would never really think to put together. And it's going to be not even in the same color family. And I'm going to show you how you could still blend those colors that are from completely different uh, color families. I have pulled some more colors and they are probably nothing you would ever think to blend together, but we're going to try it and we're going to see what happens. <laughs> we're going to get really daring with this one. <laughs> okay, so I just went and I picked some colors. And so I've got my Dahlia Purple, my Lavender, which is one of my absolute favorite purpley pink colors. And I've got cream because I need a highlight color. I pulled this, I think this is Pale Sage, but I pulled this just to kind of help me out with blending the colors together. 
And then I've got this light green, which is a very kind of bright, happy green. And the only reason I have this one is to kind of help me pull the colors together and blend them through when I make the um, transition from this to this. So let's go ahead and try this and see how it works out. I'm gonna go ahead and get these pencils all nicely sharpened. Now we have some very nicely sharpened, beautiful Prismacolor pencils. Of course, I use my Doll 133 for that and it gives us a nice, beautiful, sharp lid. There will be a link down in the description for everything that I've used in this video. The 150 set of Prismacolors is what I'm actually using, and the Doll 133 uh, pencil sharpener. And if you wanna try this yourself at home, and you want to be able to um, practice blending like this along with the video, I'll leave a link for the Spring Hill paper as well as the uh, micron pens that I love so much because those microns they will not smear and you can just uh, color right over them with your pencils as well as to where I got this little ruler to be able to make these lines. If y'all would like me to make a worksheet like this for you guys to be able to practice let me know in the comments down below because I may be able to do that. So let's go ahead and get started and I want you guys to know that I'm doing this last one just because I want you to see that you don't always need to stick to the same color family or even very close within the same color family like I did here. And you could still come up with some beautiful color combinations and the pencils will still blend together beautifully. So we are gonna do this one sort of the same way that we did this one where we do the darkest color on the top and the bottom and then just kind of bring them all through. So I've got my Dahlia Purple, and I am just going to go like this. Again, I'm using the side of my pencil, and I'm doing it on the top and the bottom. And I'm going to come over here and just go a little darker for a second layer right here at the top. But of course I want this to stay lighter because I'm going to come back and bring in my lavender now. So I'm going to bring in my lavender and I'm going to kind of go over where this blend line would be. And then I'm going to lighten it up as I come through. And again I'm going over the lighter area of the Dahlia Purple and I'm pulling through some of this lavender and then I'm going to lighten it up. Okay, so we're getting to the tricky part. We're coming in with our light green, and we're going to try to blend the light green into this lavender. And so we're gonna go over our lightest area, but not too far into it, because this is from a completely different color family, and they are opposite ends of the color wheel. Just to be able to make that transition where the blend line is, but don't go too far into it like you did previously. Okay, so I have enough of that one down. And then I am going to lay just a little bit of my Pale Sage. Just on the transition line. And then I am going to come in with my one of my favorite highlight colors, and that is my cream. And I am going to come here in the center and go over this area here. Okay, so we have all our colors laid down on the paper. I want to be able to pull that um, sage color into where the cream is. And again, I was just using that one as a tr transition color, which is why I only laid a small amount of it down, just to be able to have a lighter green to transition into the lighter, very pale yellow. Okay, so now I'm gonna come back up here and I'm gonna do it again, and I'm gonna lay my second layer of this mulberry. I'm going to lighten it up as I come down, still going over where I just laid my second layer. And I'm going to come down and do that at the bottom as well. Then I'm going to come back with my lavender and I'm going to go over where that blend line is and I'm just going to kind of pull this through. into that light green. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. 
So just keep going over with that lavender and pulling it down into where that green is, but not too far. So I'm going to come back with my light green. And I'm going to go over that. You don't want to go too far into where you've got your lavender laid. Because you don't want to make it look, you don't want to give it like a muddy look. And you still want it to be pretty. I'm going to lay down my transition color, which is my sage, sage light it's called, I think. Pale sage. <laughs> I can't remember the name is off of it. I'm pretty sure it's pale sage. Okay, and then I'm going to come back with my cream, and I'm going to blend all that together. Now, if you, you can see that um, the greens with the yellows, because they're kind of you know, within the same, not really within the same color family, but they're very close together, right next to one another on the color wheel. So if you were to blend these two together, they're going to blend together seamlessly. Now purples and pinks are on the complete opposite end of the color wheel. So they're not gonna blend together as seamlessly. So you will have to kind of work at it so I'm coming back with my Dahlia Purple. And I'm going in a circular motion and I'm pulling down into where the purple is. I'm doing that at the bottom as well. And again, the purples, because they're in the same color family, are going to blend together seamlessly. I'm going in a circular motion. This is my favorite purple, this lavender. It's so pretty. Okay, so now we are going to come back with the green. And I'm going to try to pull some of this through. Okay, so I'm just trying to make sure that I've got a really good transition between these colors. I'm adding a little bit up in here where the greens are meeting the blues or the greens are meeting the uh, purples. And then I am coming back with my cream and pulling all of these together. And I'm trying to get rid of this blend line here, which will happen that your Prismacolors are always going to blend together very nicely. I'm going to come and burnish this in a little bit more and get rid of the white of the paper. And so I'm doing this sideways now, and I'm going to speed this up um, to music so that it goes a little bit faster. And what I'm doing is I'm just coming back with each one of my colors, and I'm going over them again. So let's go ahead and turn the music on right now. step for this one is I'm just going to come back with my cream and I'm going to go the opposite direction with my page turned the other way and I'm just going to pull them all through. I don't want to pull those purples too far into the green though. And then I am going to wipe off my pencil so that I could get those colors off of it. And then I'm going to come through to the center and kind of go in a circular motion and burnish all these through. And then just blow your wax off the paper. I need to get myself a brush. I don't have one and it would help me so much. I just keep putting off getting it. So if you have a brush, just kind of brush the wax off the paper with a makeup brush or whatever you've got. Okay, so that was our little blending tutorial with Prismacolors. I hope y'all enjoyed it. 
We did one where it was kind of all in the same family, but with two highlight colors, and I showed you how to do that. Then we did another one all in the same color family, and I showed you how the difference in the values makes a huge difference, or the difference in the values of color, even within the same color family. And then the last one, we used colors on the complete opposite ends of the color wheel, and we were still able to get a really good blend and cover up a lot of those uh, blend lines where the colors were meeting. And to do that, in one part, we went ahead and used a transition color. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, please do subscribe and turn on your bell notifications. If you liked this video, please do give it a thumbs up because it helps my channel out a lot. And I hope you all have a fabulous day. Happy coloring. Bye.